and welcome back. Now in the last segment we went ahead and we moved our doors. We haven't really got fully into it yet. There's so many different things I need to show you before we jump in because the new user and even the advanced user might benefit from some of these tips. The first three things or two things that we're going to be covering in the tutorial, the fuselage and the stripe are probably the two or two fairly complicated techniques that do need warming up to and I need to make sure that you understand the basic principles. So for right now I'm going to get out of this by zooming out and I'm going to press F on the keyboard to get myself back to the window. So let's look at what I've done in the actual paint that I'm going to be painting in this tutorial. And looks can be deceiving here. For the most part it may look like a fairly simple paint and it is int. It's actually using techniques to better provide lessons. So the gradient that you might think that this is is not a gradient. This is actually a layer mask and that is so I can change it later more easily. I don't have to worry about matching up colors down the road and we'll get into that um, a little later. But also you can see if I zoom in here to the windows and the doors, you can see that I have um, the white light on the sides showing the 3D effect, um, some light glare. And you might also notice that like my light housing is embossed or beveled. The line itself is actually two lines. Probably can't see that, but it is two lines, uh, two very small green lines, one on each side with one stripe in the middle. And the rivets and lines you can see right now. And again, I created these myself, and I will show you some tips on how to do that later. Now, originally in my videos earlier, I mentioned how there was no color. There was no fill color whatsoever, and there wasn't. Well, I changed that in my library, and I changed that here so you can better see what they do look like. When we go to save this out, that will change, and I will drop the fill. So, let's take a quick look here at one thing that will hopefully benefit a lot of very experienced painters and start you new painters off on some really good habits. And I'm going to go ahead and let's pretend that I painted this, I'm all done with it, and i am now moved on to, say, my engine PSD. And I need my fuselage color, or I need my bottom color, say, maybe from the bottom of my wings or my pylons or, you know, so many different things. I have to now open up this PSD, wait for it to load everything, just so I can sample my color. Okay, so just like somebody, if they come to your house and they have, you know, color swatches for you to choose from, or your wife, you know, you can do that for yourself, and I always do that for every one of my paints. It just saves me so much time. Let's say without it, I wanted to sample this blue. If I were to sample this blue right now, you know, who knows where I'm sampling? If you notice that, I could be clicking you know, in the wrong spot, and no matter where I click it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm going to click a clean spot here, and that's the best I can probably come up with. But remember, this is acting as a gradient, so my darkest color, or my most pure color of this color is going to be back here. So, there we go. That's going to be wrong, because it's underneath the weather layer, the shadow layer, and whatever else I might have there. So what I would need to do is I would need to come over here and I would need to take that particular layer and older versions of Photoshop might have simpler techniques. I believe they do. A point sample. And I can come up here now and make sure my blending mode is set for normal. My opacity is set for 100 and fill. And now I can come over here and resample my color. And of course it did change. If I'm trying to match up colors later on and I did not do that step, then it's going to cause me a lot of problems. 
So how do I do that? How do I color palette or create a color palette? I'm going to undo this and put that back into place by control Z. Undo. And I'm going to double click somewhere on the, my background here. And that'll bring up my open dialog box. And the open dialog box, by the way, since it's the first time we're looking at it, you probably have different options. Use Adobe's or use OS. Teach their own. I don't like Adobe's. So here is my color PSD. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see that I have a fuse color swatch, stripe, gold, my bottom color, and all sorts of different colors, and even keynotes. So let's start off on the right foot here, and let's create one of these. And I'm going to go ahead and say Control N on the keyboard for a new image. I'm going to name that color, colors, and the width 800, and I'm going to say 250. And now I'm just going to go ahead with the marquee tool selected. I'm going to, first of all, give myself some workspace so I can start out here and create a nice little block. And I got my color sample. And now to fill it with that foreground color, I'm going to press Alt Backspace. And now I'm going to deselect this by either clicking away or pressing Control D. Now right off the bat, I want to stay organized. And it's very easy to not be organized. So I'm going to call this layer Colors. And you do that by double clicking the actual letters. If you click outside of those letters, you're going to bring up the Layer Styles dialog box. And if you double click the actual thumbnail or preview, thumbnail preview, that could open or select your text. It depends on what you have for a layer. If you're holding down Control, of course, that's going to make a selection. So now I get to select the select, uh, excuse me, the text tool. I'm going to press T on the keyboard. And I'm going to bring this back out to full screen here. And I'm going to click somewhere in here and I'm going to start typing, let's say, Fuse. Now, this is something that I really don't like about Photoshop. It's one of the most ridiculous things that I think exists. And that is every tool has its own toolbar. And you'll notice it has a color palette all its own. Well, it's going to use the, it's going to default all the time to your foreground color. So how do you fix that? Well, if I was to go up right now and change my color, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to happen because I need to select that text. So since I'm already in that text layer, I can press Control A for Select All. Then I can go up and change that color. And there it is. Or I could double click on the layer to select all the text and so on and so on. To get out of this, I'm going to click on the T. And you can see that it named it Fuse. So I'm going to press V, the letter V as in Victor. And that switches to my movement tool. And I'm going to move that somewhat into position here and nudge it with my arrow keys. And now we're off to the races. So. I also have my stripe and everything else. So let's take a look at this color if you're following along and want to do it exactly. We have 1F4473. I'll go ahead and get that stripe color out of the way also. But real quick, I'm going to come over here and select that colors layer. I'm going to want the same size box. You can see I have different sizes here. And just to show you a different technique, I'm going to press W on the keyboard for the wand tool. And now I can make, click on this particular color and it selects everything within here, you know, that particular color. And I'm going to switch to my marquee tool again with the letter M. And if you notice, I have this cross here. And this cross here, once I move it within that selection, changes to that symbol, which is saying that now I can move that selection. So as long as I'm within here, I'm going to move that selection. If I was outside of that selection and I clicked, it's going to think I want a new selection and deselect it. So I'll control Z that so I can get my selection back. 
Now, one thing that's really cool about selections that people might not know is I can move them between images just like I could um, actual layers by dragging and dropping them with the selection tool. If I want to move a selection, I need to have a selection tool selected. If I want to move the actual layer, then I would have the movement tool selected. So to give you an example, let's say I had this selection just overlapping this particular color and I had that layer selected. If I had the movement tool selected, then it's going to show me scissors. And what's that, what that's telling me is that if I now move this, it's going to cut whatever is within that selection of that layer. Okay? So I'll switch back to my movement tool here and let's get that back into position. And I'm going to go ahead now and just move this to another layer. And now it keeps the proportions exactly the way I had it here. And that's just a good tip if you didn't know that already. In this case, I want to just move it over here and create, you know, another swatch. So I'm going to click it and drag and let go. And I'm going to fill that with this color. So let's sample it. And Alt backspace fill it control D to deselect it and then I'm going to click on my fuse layer here since I already had that one done the color set I'm going to press control J on the keyboard and I'll duplicate it if you get an error it's because you still have a selection so now I'll double click on this T I'm going to type in stripe and I am going to click on the T to get out of it press V for the movement tool and instead of moving it with my cursor I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna arrow key that over and what that does is if I hold down shift it moves it 10 pixels at a time if I just nudge it it's one pixel at a time and there we go I'm off and running now you can go ahead and save this and save it to your your actual PSD that you might have. Uh, I'm sorry, your PSD folder. So let's say save as for me, since I already have one here, and go into your PMDG paint kit in your PSD's folder and save it as colors or color or whatever you want to do. And I'll save that and I will overwrite it. And OK. Now I also like to stay organized as much as I can because before you know it, you're not organized anymore. So take some time on your own and keep yourself organized. I have everything, all my names in one thing, and I have all my colors on one thing, and I can see what it is. So just another little tip. So as we go, I'll tell you the exact colors, and I will expect you to be all squared away with that one little tip. So now that we got that out of the way, we're pretty much, again, almost ready to really get into the painting. But you really need to know these things, and I want to be able to show these things along the way rather than have five videos um, of just tips that people aren't going to watch. So I say them for a reason. They are good things that you might want to get into and staying organized is very essential saving you know often is very essential and you'll have to learn that for yourselves I can't reiterate that one enough so in the next tutorial we will actually get right into the painting we'll start doing some fuselage and I will show you a lot of things with layer masks